time for another stock review. We're going to go deep into the numbers of Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing. We're also going to look uh, deep dive at uh, the financials, who owns the stock, who is selling on the inside. I'm going to give a profitability score. We're going to deep dive into the website. We're going to do uh, look. We're going to look at the dividends, payouts, the history, how it compares to the S&P 500. I'm going to give you a profitability score, a solvency score, share with you the intrinsic value, discuss how we get to those uh, readings as well. And I'm going to use the most advanced algorithmic software. What you're about to see is the most honest review available. Uh, I use the most advanced software. You're looking at it right now. My members can get access to this uh, for a discount. And in fact, my membership is free. I'm not trying to sell you anything at all. Uh, I'm not sponsored by anyone. I go live every day up to 10 hours a day to prove that this is real and genuine and honest. And every single one of my reviews makes it onto Alpha Spread. I then get to meet the CEOs. I have a Meet the CEO series where the CEOs uh, get interviewed by me uh, at a preference. They prefer being here than Bloomberg and CNBC. Uh, our first uh, guest last week told me that's why he was on our show. Anyway, let's go into the stock. We start off nice and basic first of all, and then we'll get into some heavy numbers as we go. If you are here for the very first time, consider subscribing and ringing the bell and tap the like button. If you like the video, it will share it out to more people and uh, it'll promote this story. Whether you like it or not, it'll uh, help the video. All right. Okay. So what is Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing? It is, like it sounds, Semiconductor manufacturing engages the manufacture and sale of integrated circuits and wafer semiconductor devices. Its chips are used in personal computers, peripheral products, information applications, wired and wireless communications, system products, and automotive. Uh, of course, with EV explosion and AI and supercomputers and quantum computers, we need more and more chips all the time. Industrial equipment, including consumer electronics, such as digital video, compact display, digital, digital television, games consoles, and digital cameras. I think we get the idea. Now then, something I need to share with you, it's very, very important when you come to semiconductor manufacturing. It's not as easy as you think, and uh, you can't just build factories around the world. Do you realize that uh, the complexity of putting together chips has to be done in a very, very, very unique, extremely... Um, difficult to produce factories that have very, very deep foundations to protect from any tremors in the ground. There could be an earthquake miles below the factory that is undetectable by a human, but it would be detected by the laser printers and everything else, and uh, it would affect the manufacturer. So that's why uh, semiconductor companies, uh, manufacturing companies can't start, start up all over the place. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. Anyway, looking at the line chart, first of all, just basic, you get an idea of the maximum here. Going back to uh, February 2000, you get an idea how the stock was right down here at $9.40. And then we had the explosion, of course, in 2020 with the explosion of EVs and AI and technology. You can see how this company has grown recently. It did uh, sell off in 2022. We had all, all, all kinds of uh, concerns. You may remember the incident. We covered it live. Nancy Pelosi flying to Taiwan, and we, we had all sorts of issues. And uh, Nancy Pelosi also, by the way, then bought here and went here, and you can come to your own conclusions. But anyway, you remember, remember that day? We covered it live on the show. Anyway, if you buy it on margin, it's 25% maintenance. If you use margin to buy this, I use maintenance, uh, margin at the moment. I'm at 8%. Uh, that's the 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 APY. Uh, it's regarded as the lowest level of risk for margin. Twenty five percent is the lowest minimum level of margin maintenance requirement on any stock. The highest is a hundred, uh, and so it's regarded as low risk from the point of view of margin. Okay. Uh, if we look at the market cap, it's a large company. It's five hundred and twenty nine billion. Uh, high today is one hundred and two. 52 week highs, 110, price earnings ratio, 18. Now, that doesn't sound too expensive. However, we need to compare that to the competition. 
I like on. There are others, but you need to look at the competition to see how good a deal you are getting. Remember, people will overpay for a stock that has massive growth and potential. Catch the S curve, but we we could already be on the S curve uh, and we could be flattening out. So is it a good time to buy right now? You need to compare the price of the stock to the earning ratio. 18. So the first thing you want to do is compare to others in the sector. On would be one, and I'll, I'll, I will identify more in a few moments. This is unusual in a high growth stock. It has a dividend yield place to it. That's good. However, we'll discover in a minute how reliable that is. Is it a dividend king? Is it a Coca-Cola, a J&J, which constantly increases the dividend, always pays it, always improves? Is it one of those? We'll look at that in a minute. Average vol because, of course, if you've got a dividend stock uh, and you're buying it for the dividend, but yet the stock is going down, clearly this stock isn't going down right now, then the dividend is not a reason to buy it. However, if the, um, if the dividend isn't paying out very often, is it any use? Anyway, we'll cover all that in detail in a moment. The average volume, 9.92, uh, um, uh, is a reasonable uh, 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 volume. Not that high, not a lot going on. 2.53 million uh, today so far, mid-morning, but very much below average. Uh, volume is important because if you have high volume, you can get out of the stock. You might want to sell it and get out. Uh, so there's low volume. You could be waiting to sell a stock. It could drop and uh, you could set your limit order and not get out. Anyway, uh, now then, let's move on down and uh, let's have a little look. Um Morningstar are uh, analysts. I don't use them. I have my own. I do my own an uh, analysis on stocks. They are paid. They are sponsored. Don't always uh, use this. I, well, I don't use this at all as a guide to buy anything. However, it's simplistic and people like to look at it on Robinhood here. It says a buy of 97%. Uh, okay, that doesn't mean it's a buy at all. Um, and bearing in mind, this was done on the 12th of December. We are now the 21st. Is it that reliable? Well, we'll come on to that in a minute. No one's saying sell. It's just a, it's just virtually 100% buy. It sounds great. What do the bulls say? The bulls say TSM will benefit from more semiconductor firms embracing the uh, fabulous business model and internet giants designing their own data center chips. And bears say Samsung and Intel are committed to heavily uh, heavy capital spending under the support of the U.S. government, M SMIC, and other data estate supported Chinese foundries also lurk as potential threats. Okay. We've got macro conditions, of course, with China and Taiwan. Of course, that does scare a few people. Understandably, understandably. Um, so, you know, we can, un we can uh, relate to that. It is, uh, it's been around since 1987 and uh, his shoe, uh, his shoe, I'm probably pronounced that correct. Uh, it's incorrect. And I apologize for that. Right. Let's look at the earnings and we're going to get a much more deeper in a moment. This is just simple stuff so far. Obviously the company's making money. Uh, we can see it's all positive territory. Didn't used to be, but it is now, uh, wall street, pretty, pretty reasonable, uh, estimating this one. Remember, the estimate is done by Wall Street, not the company. Typically, for uh, innovative stocks, uh, Wall Street are rubbish. But we kind of know what we have with a, with a chip, I guess. Uh, things like Tesla or Space or anything that's very unknown right now, it's new, they're not that good at it. Of course, chips are brand new, I don't get me wrong, but uh, a chip is a chip, you know. That sounds very simplistic, but you know what I mean. They probably are much better at this. And so far, other than once, they've been pretty accurate on this. Typically, they're not. Anyway, the stock, it's going sideways. Earnings isn't uh, isn't improving by, by very much at the moment. Who are we in bed with? In other words, who invests with uh, semi uh, uh, TSM, what else do they invest in? Now, the reason why I share this is it gives you a sentiment of the stock, how the stock is going to move. A lot of uh, young retail investors, particularly those on, on, uh, on Robinhood, look for what sounds cool, what's modern, what's new, whatever. doesn't mean it's great, of course, but it's current, it's trending. It's on YouTube, someone's talking about it. AMD, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Intel. 
Some good companies here. However, very overbought stock. NVIDIA, extremely overbought. Everyone jumps on in AMD. I wouldn't touch it uh, at all. Uh, you know, we, 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 we all know how these stocks can, can operate. They can get over pumped. They can drop. They can be volatile. Got to be very careful. And that's the people that are in these companies. Microsoft is very expensive. I don't know anything about Micron technology. I've never, I've never reviewed it. I've never reviewed Qualcomm either. But uh, we have some volatility. Uh, we don't have any Coca-Cola, J&J, the S&P 500. We don't have any solid, reliable. We have very aggressive chip companies, which kind of makes sense. But uh, it does mean the stock can be volatile. Anyway, let's go and look at the website before we go into the deep dive and find out who's buying on the inside, selling, balance sheets, profitability, and all the rest of it. Let's look at the website. I like to show the website because it shows, it speaks to the investor more than the customer. The customer already knows. I would imagine that any company like this has already reached out to its customers. This is just, this This speaks to the investor. And that's uh, Let's go into um, the investor pages just to get an idea uh, of the way it speaks to the investor. And that's important, right? Uh, the fundamentals, investors. Let's have a quick look here. Uh, TSMC shares are an attractive investment for semiconductor innovations. The world's largest and best semiconductor foundry. Remember what I explained about the foundry. You can't just build a factory and make semiconductors anywhere you like. You have to have a very specific building that is very, 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 very expensive to produce. It's very hard to do. That's why there aren't semiconductor factories all over the place. Anyway, hence the semiconductor chip shortages we wish we didn't have last year or the year before. Pioneered the dedicated semiconductor foundry business model, enabled a uh, fa uh, fabulous IC design industry to flourish and unleash in innovations with all logic IC designers. Built the world's largest semiconductor design ecosystem and collaborated with all its customers' partners to from the most powerful force of semiconductor innovations. About 85% of worldwide semiconductor startup product prototypes were enabled by TSMC. Okay. Received the prestigious 2021 IEE uh, Corporate Innovation Award, honoring the company's leadership in developing seven nanometer foundry technology and enable, en enabling its innovations of IC designs everywhere. Okay, we'll leave that for a minute. We don't want to go too much uh, into that, but uh, it looks good. It speaks well to the investor. You'd be surprised. Some websites, uh, some companies don't actually speak to their investor. They're just talking to the customer. This is very, very different, very solid, very, very good company. No question. However, you want to buy at the right price. So that's what we're going to do now. And then we'll look at the dividends and then we'll look at the S&P 500. Let's go and have a look now. Is this worth buying? Now, everyone talks about the intrinsic value of a company. The intrinsic value is much more uh, detailed now than what Morningstar did when they said it was great and you should buy it. Now we're going to go and look in the numbers. And we've got to be careful because there, be, uh, there can be traps here. So if we look at the best case scenario, 42% undervalue. Best case scenario, what's the best case scenario? Macro conditions going away. China threats to Taiwan. What about um, competition? What about uh, in, uh, high inflation, interest rates? All of those things, um, interest rates certainly are being rectified, inflation all good, but the ongoing macro conditions are still a concern. Uh, so we're not in this area. We are probably in this area, 6% undervalue. Now, for anything with an explosive growth, semiconductors, I would suggest, probably are, because we've got AI, space, uh, quantum computers. We need more and more chips. And as we've already learned, Taiwan Semiconductor is one of the leaders. Uh, we can overpay by 25%. Because people buy into those stocks because, like Tesla, you're buying in a future price. So it's undervalued as long as we don't get any warnings in a moment. What about worst case scenario? 
Even worst case scenario, it's only 15% overvalued. Not too bad. Looks pretty good if we look at the valuation today. However, let's check for any warnings. Are there any warnings? No. And the reason why I mention that is if we have a valuation warn, uh, warning, a, uh, a, a an intrinsic value trap, okay, that could mean um, that um, we do have a, a price that looks cheap, but in fact, it's never achieved over hist historical purposes, achieved its uh, intrinsic value. So actually, uh, it could be misleading. It's not. This is accurate. This is giving us a very accurate, reliable uh, valuation. Now, if you want this software, I, I will give you a link to it at the end of the video and you can get my software and members can get a lifetime discount and you'll basically get my membership for free. It's only given to me. Bloomberg don't have it. Yahoo don't have it. Finance, uh, CNBC don't have it. I'm the only one who has this. It's, it's the best deal. No one gets this deal. Let's look at the most recent earnings. This is where we use our AI technology to draw from what was said, unbiased, as it is, not, not uh, you know, color-coded and whatever, flavored, as it is, and then we report to you those, those facts. In Q3, TSMC's revenue rose by 10.2% uh, uh, in, in, in USD. Um, driven by three nanometer and five nanometer technology demand, offset by inventory adjustments. The gross margin slightly increased to 54%. The gross margin slightly increased to 54%, while the operating margin dipped to 41.7%. For Q4, they forecast revenue... Um, uh, between 18.8 and 19.6 billion, signaling an 11% increase at the midpoint. Gross margin is expected to drop 52.5% due to three um, nanometer technology ramping up with a strategic capex budget for approximately um, 32 billion and the aim to maintain a long term gross. Uh, margin of 50% or higher, TSMC is poised to uh, for, for profitable growth while supporting customer expansion. Okay. Um, let's move now down into the financials. Let's look at the revenue. $2.2 trillion. It dipped. We're making some expenditure investments. And now we're expecting it to rise and rise again until 2025, 26, it might tail out. But of course, this far ahead is a bit so hard to tell. Operating income, also negative on the most recent range, hence the dip, hence uh, perhaps a potential buy now. Let me go back to the stock price just for a moment. And let's go back over the maximum. Just for a moment, let me bring it on the screen. You can see the maximum. Let me do it over the last, uh, the year to date, 34%. Okay. The last three months, we've risen 18%. The whole market has risen though. Um, we're not in a, we're not in a dip at the moment. We've, we've dipped recently, but um, in the last uh, week, we've dropped a little bit. Today, we dropped them back up again. But uh, overall, over the last three months, it is trending up. Over the last year to date, trending up. Um, five year. Yeah, you're not, not going to get this dip again, this dip here. I don't think that's going to happen now. That time has gone. Um, maximum. Can it go back to where it was? Maybe. Anyway, we'll carry on looking at the numbers. Let's go back here. Operating income. 90, 960, 986 billion, negative 8%, uh, down 8%, I beg your pardon. Most recent range, net income, down 7% on the most recent range. And now we are, now we're moving up. And these figures are very accurate. Um, cash flow, down 27%, most recent range. Capital expenditure, Spending less. We just learned that a few moments ago. Um, 
The person that requested this review, David Burrows, is about to have a, a super chat and a comment on the screen. Um, think Taiwan PK, uh, PKG Congress um, pass will move the stock. Oh, I'm sure. Um, that will come up on the in a second on the screen. Capital expenditure, they are spending less, which is a good thing. Down 3% on the most recent range. Operating cash flow. We've, we've understood why that's gone down because of the expenditure, but that's going to turn around soon. That's why I think the market is moving up. Um, negative uh, 8%. So down 8%. Let's look on their balance sheet. This is very, very important. Here, here comes the comment. Think Taiwan PKG Congress pass will move stock? Um, I agree. I think it will. I think it will. Um, 5.5 trillion in assets, 2.1 trillion in liabilities. Long-term debt is just under a billion. Half of their liabilities is long-term debt. I don't like to see long-term debt, um, half of their liabilities, Short term debt, if we are, if we're just doing something recently, I can live with that. But uh, short, a long term debt, I don't like that as a bit of debt there. Um, however, the assets are 5.5 billion. Do they hold any cash? 1.6 trillion in cash. The point is, that's a very, very strong balance sheet. They could pay off their loans tomorrow if they wanted to. Most businesses keep loans. It's uh, keep debt. It's why I have margin at the moment. I can make more than 8% and that's going to go down to 6 and 5 in the new year. I can make more money holding my debt as opposed to paying it off. Um, I don't mean normal debt. I don't mean credit card debt at 23%. I mean uh, low value debt. Uh, which I'm using to fund my business, not to buy myself a new car or have a holiday, but uh, margin is 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 debt to buy assets which are increasing in value. So uh, right now I'm making 30% in a month. So 8% a year makes sense. So that's why a business could hold debt. It's, uh, it's high and I don't like to see it, but they've got plenty of cash and it's a small part of its overall pie. If we look at the liabilities, long-term debt is 45%. That is a negative for me, but I bet when we look at the solvency score in a moment, it looks favorable because of the cash they hold. Let's see if I was right. Margins, 57%. Now then, their margins have fallen a little bit. They were as high as 60%. Now, you need high margins in this sector. This is where the sector belongs. It needs to have high margins. No point saying, well, a profit's a profit, 20% is a profit. No, you need high margins to compete because if you don't have a high margin, your moat is narrow and you can be, um, you, you can have competition. So while we're looking at 57% margin, let's look at on. On semiconductor. Let's look at on. 57% um, um, margin. Let's look at on. See how it compares. Look at their margins. Uh, very similar ratio here. 48%. They have higher margins than on. That's important. That's important. Let's go back to Taiwan. Scroll back down again, 57%. Now, why is that important? They're in the same business, but they have greater margins. Like Enphase is going to beat in solar, it's going to beat uh, the competition. Its margins are so high, it can afford to sell less and keep prices up and crush the competition. And uh, and then eventually it's, uh, it, take, it, it dominates the space. So, this is very, very good for the, for the, for the company. Very, very good indeed. Um, let's move down. Everything looks very, very rosy in their garden, to be honest. Now, here we go. This is what we're talking about. This is what I said here. The profitability is 74. Exceptional. Bright green. Very rarely go higher than that. Very, very good. Software numbers. Brilliant. Can't fault it. 
you definitely want to buy a company like this. And there revealed it is what I expected. And I didn't see that number until I bought it on the screen. It was below. I couldn't see it. But looking at their debt position compared to their cash reserves, I said, it's a very good balance sheet. And that is exactly what I expected. And that's what we got. 85 is as good as it gets. I've not seen it any higher than that. It's not going bust. It's a solid company. Its balance sheet is excellent. Doesn't go any higher than that. You can't really go much higher than that. It has debt, but it's manageable and it could pay it off in a heartbeat. It chooses not to do so. So this is a good business. You're buying a good business. Is it the right time to buy it though? Do you believe there's much more in the tank? Do you believe expansion? Yes, I do. Absolutely, I do. We're only starting now to make chips. This is one for me. I am looking at this thinking, this is one for me. Just the macro conditions is the only concern here. Wall Street, they say a 13% upside from here. They don't give it much of an upside. They think it's already peaked. Well, you wouldn't buy it for 13%. You could just buy the S&P. However, average, 6%. Again, buy the S&P. Lowest, 13%. So you might argue, if you like the business, I would say I do, How? Do, when am I going to buy it? So I've already decided it's a buy for me. I'm going to buy this, but I will tell you my strategy in a moment as we come to the end of the video. If you want to compare to the competition, I'll give you the link to these businesses and you can compare to them. And uh, these, these are very important to do this. You can look at the competition and see if, if on is better and you can make your mind up. But uh, you might want to look at this. I'll give you the link at the end. Shareholder return, percent short, uh, per short, none. Not applicable. What does that mean? Does it mean there are none? It means it's unmeasurable, so it doesn't, it's insignificant. I've actually, honestly, never seen that before. Never seen, not applicable. Our software picks it up. If there were any measure, a measurable amount, it would be picked up. It's not. Um, I've never seen it say not applicable before, though. Um, that doesn't mean there aren't any, but it's unmeasurable, so it's insignificant. No short interest, no short squeeze on the cards. Okay, let's look at the the sentiment of the stock before we go over to doing uh, um, a comparison with the S&P and on uh, over time and also look at the dividend payouts. Very, very important. Over the last uh, 90 days, we can see we've had 70% of news picked up by our AI software of, of, of the positive news around the stock. Last 30 days, it's increased to 78%. The last seven days, it's just dropped back to 63%. And today, it's 50-50. No negative news at all here. This is very, very good. Very, very good indeed. Now, let's take a look how it compares to the S&P 500 and how uh, accurate and how reliable the dividend payouts are. So let's go straight into that now. So you, if you're buying uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, it does come with a dividend. However, how regularly does it pay out and does it increase? Is it a dividend king? Is it J&J? &J? Is it, is it uh, a Coca-Cola? Well, we'll go back here uh, to 2013. It was paying out dividends then, 50. You can see here, 50, 49, 72, 93, 150, 131, 128, 32. So what you can see straight away, uh, thank you uh, for the subscription, Nuzzery, during the live show. As you can see, it's, um, it's, uh, it's not a dividend king. It doesn't consistently increase and it bounces around. So it's volatile. So you've got to be bear that in mind and we'll look at how it compares by reinvesting the dividends in a few moment, few moments as we compare it to the S&P and on. 44 in 21, 43, 49, 49, 46. It's stabilized now a little bit. October 22, 43, 44. So we can sort of draw an average of 44 cents a share. It's kind of the average, even though it's not always increasing and it's not always, um, it's always paid out though. It's just not as, um, you know, you can't be sure of what it's going to be. However, however, recently, since we've seen the uh, the real takeoff of the stock, 
47, dipped to 30, 43, 44, 43, 46, 47, and 54 is expected. So you can see, expect around about the 45. It has always paid out since it started. Um, it's not always increased. It's up and down a little bit, but it kind of averages around the 40. So it's pretty reliable from a dividend standpoint. Now let's look at the uh, the performance. If we were investing in this, how does it compare to the S&P and on? Because we need to know, could we make more money somewhere else? Let's have a look. $10,000 back in 2011. As you can see, the S&P is in blue. Steady as you go all the way through, would now be up at $46,000, 4x since 2011. In red, we have on semiconductor, much more volatile. No question about that. It dipped below the S&P. It's now risen above the S&P and we would now have in on $72,000. Much better outperform the S&P. What about Taiwan? Well, Taiwan didn't have the volatility at the beginning, continued to rise, didn't have as much of a dip um, uh, during COVID. It seemed to be a little bit more resilient at uh, 2020 and uh, it continued to grow and it's outperformed the S&P in yellow and it's outperformed on. So we are now looking at 114 thousand dollars. So as you can see, it's outperformed the S&P and it's outperformed um, uh, uh, outperformed the um, on as well. So is it a buy? Let's wrap up this uh, review and let's make a decision whether we're going to buy it or not. On Semiconductor, no question about it, is a great business. It's not going bust. Its dividend is relatively stable. And I say stable, it pays out all the time. It's not, it's around about that 45, 46 cents a share. You can't be, you know, uh, clear exactly what it's going to be. Of course, you know ahead of time because they always announce it, but uh, for a long-term investment, don't always expect it to be exactly 44. It moves around a little bit, generally trends up, but from time to time, it does pay out a little bit of a bonus if you, you look at it that way. Um, but uh, it's not a, dividend king, but it is pretty reliable and it's pretty good. Uh, and it's percentage in percentage terms. It's not too shabby either. But remember, this has a great growth as well. Now, remember though, if you are buying this in the United States, you can see on the screen ADR. What does that mean? Let me show you what it means. It means this, uh, American Depository. Uh, receipts represents shares of non-US based companies. Bank issues ADRs to facilitate trading on US exchanges. Some banks require investors to pay periodic fees, typically one cent. I will I, I, I will tell you that when I've sold a stock, that's an ADR, some UK stocks, um, uh, it, I've, been pay, I've been charged on Robinhood one cent. That is it to sell the stock. It's, it's irrelevant, completely irrelevant, but you have to state it. So it's uh, not a US company. It's based in Taiwan, of course. Uh, the only issue I have is um, competition is not a big deal, um, really. It's very hard to re replicate what they're doing. If you think China is the threat and we're going to have a big issue with Taiwan, that could be an issue. I don't think we're going to. I don't think it makes any sense to, 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 uh, for that. Taiwan Semiconductor probably pr provide, I don't know, but they probably provide a lot of the chips that China uses. So I don't think it's going to be uh, uh, you know, under threat anytime soon. However, is it worth buying? Definitely the sort of company I want to buy. Um, it's definitely undervalued from the base case. Uh, a good dividend, a good business. Is it the right time to buy it? Well, if we look at it over the last week, it's dipped when everything else is up significantly over the last month, um, we can over the last oops those over the last month it's risen by three point um, eight percent. That's below my trend. I've, I'm up thirty percent over the last month, so actually it's uh, underperformed from the point of view of my uh, my other positions. Um, so it's not cheap. It's not the best time to buy it. I would have, of course, liked to have bought it three months ago or bought on a dip. So this this would be my move. I want to buy um, this 
stock. No doubt about it. I like it. It's a business I want to own. I'm going to buy it. What I'm going to do is decide uh, my allocation. For something like this, I would like to allocate $2,000. Currently, I'm in, a, I'm in a time that I'm trimming off my margin. I'm doing expecting margin to become cheaper in the new year. Uh, I am expecting a dip before we go higher. I think tax harvesting is around the corner. I've bought enough this year. Uh, I've uh, made plenty of money on the rally. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to allocate $2,000 for this company. I am going to lay myself down in market share. Maybe one, just one share, 100 bucks, 102 bucks. And if it drops a, a percent or two, I will buy three or four shares, three or 400 bucks. Still got 1,600 available. Then as it drops further, I might buy some more. Um, and uh, if it goes up, that's fine. I've got myself in the stock. But I'd be waiting to try to get it lower, but I'd already get in. And, and when it dips one or 2%, I'd buy a bit more. If it dips five, 10%, I'd be all in. My full $2,000 allocation. That's how I'm going to play it. Anyway, there's my review on Taiwan Semiconductor. It's a buy from me. I would like to buy it a bit cheaper. It does have some growth. I think you need to just wait for it to cool a little, perhaps in January, but early January, not February. Then it's too late, I would say. Interest rates are going to come down and up we go. So anyway, there's my thought on Taiwan Semiconductor. Click above my head. That'll give you all my links to, to my social media where I post uh, I, I post my trades before I make them. And also uh, links below in the description of Alpha Spread as well, where you can get a lifetime discount to the services. Uh, using my membership, you'll get my membership for free. It's the best algorithmic software out there. It's the best way of valuing any stock. And over here, I'll put my full Alpha Spread review. I've done nearly 40 stocks now, all down here and meet the CEO. I'm meeting the CEOs and interviewing them live on my show. They like the honesty of the show. Get to the mind of the CEO. I'll put this down here as well. So there you go. There is my, um, there is my review on uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Leave me your thoughts below. Like the video if you liked it. And uh, that's it from me. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.